thank you both for doing what you do with the channel. I'm a cis head guy who was sexually okay. Fine. Yeah, this is no, not okay, a Jesus one. fucking Christ! Guys. Like I, I also wanted, okay. Yeah, I'm a cis head guy who was sexually assaulted about eight years ago. I recently mustered up the courage to get back into the dating game, but I've been suffering hardcore from intimacy issues since the assault. Basically, although I desire sex and intimacy, once I'm with another person, I end up having negative feelings, difficulty feeling in the mood, and ultimately avoiding sex. To make matters worse, I couldn't really talk about why I felt, why I felt this, uh, this way with my partner. This has already cost me one relationship. I know that it's not a healthy mindset to be in, and that uh, leaving it unaddressed with future partners is only going to make things worse. However, I don't know how to talk, uh, how to have this talk with any sexual partner. I feel that conversation, that that conversation is a whole lot of negativity for one person to process. And considering that I live in a regressive rural area where the dominant view is that men can't be victims of sexual assault, I feel like I have no support from my community and I'm too afraid to turn to my friends for advice. Ultimately, my questions are, how do I talk about my assault and intimacy struggles with a partner? And should I apologize to my ex? Since my lack of intimacy and inability to discuss why, why that sank this relationship, uh, it really led, a lot, led to a lot of anxiety on her part. Apologies for the heavy topic. I keep up the great work you and Roland do with AAA. I mean, thank you so much for bringing that to us. I mean, uh, yeah, the fact that you said you can't talk to anyone and you send that in is really, I mean, I hope we can do justice to that question, basically. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, you get them and you kind of read them for yourself a little bit, but like now reading it aloud, it's just, it's, it's kind of makes it ever, ever so more real, you know, uh, not only was the, the terrible event happened like eight years ago, they said that you know, they've only recently started dating again, and um, to think that that's still, still causing all of these issues, like, it's just, it's fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. I would say that I completely understand why you feel um, concerned about bringing this up with a partner, because I have known people to bail after they're told something like this, and that is just the most heartbreaking and awful thing like I mean no, like I understand why people bail like yeah dealing with someone else's emotions is shit and it's hard but yeah I completely understand why you would have this insecurity particularly if it's gone badly in the past talking about it or rather it seems like the absence of talking about it was what ruined the previous relationship I mean the, the basic advice is like before we go into it in more detail is it has to be you have to know that you trust that person so much before you disclose something like that but but then I, I don't, I don't, on the other hand it's like would you even begin to date someone if you can't as such I, but I mean I know that like there's thing, things in my past that I would not disclose to someone after one month two months six months like a year of dating right but that I still eventually if I felt confident with someone would would disclose I want to address quickly that last question that you had in terms of like should I talk to my ex about this mm. uh, yeah I don't know again this is subjective it's just us but like I will say yes um, not you know you do also have a responsibility towards a certain relationship and if if, if that person is, is broken and they don't know why you don't have to go into the detail of it all as such and you probably haven't and maybe you already said like it's me it's not it's not you sort of thing you know but um you even asking this, this question again we're going meta here but like you clearly feel inadequate as to how things turned out there well not maybe inadequate or but like guilt or you have something. guilt and or you see that this person like ended up in a, in, the, in the wrong place and uh, yeah if you're even asking that question uh, i will i will say yes and also having been also in spaces where I just don't know what happened and then you know years down the line turns out there was come something completely different and yes I made you know a guilt trip myself for months and months and months like that that is that is brutal and I think that potentially could be a very difficult thing for a person to take as well as a partner so I think you do have responsibility that no although I though I purely of course understand that there's like a you know, like a shitty fucked up thing happened to you. It only now gets 
reproduced like that and now you feel like you hurt someone because someone really messed you up like that so it's absolutely it's it's just it's shit either way but but like you don't want to reproduce that cycle basically i i think yes but i also think it depends on the relationship you had with your ex and the relationship of you course. still have with your ex and whether there's someone that even now you trust with that information because essentially that is your information and whilst it can help other people you don't owe anyone that information per se if you feel like you did them a wrong then you can phrase it in a you know in a subtle way or in a vague way and you can if you want to clear the air you must have tried that though you know what i mean maybe but there's another thing which is also relevant ish is that like if you break someone's heart and they don't know why and then years later you go to them to make them to make yourself feel less guilty by like yeah, trying true. to explain your side of the story that can also sometimes be self-serving in a way more than that's it benefits true, them like yeah and they're like over it at that yeah point, and then right? you're like so i think it basically it really depends on what your relationship with the ex is yeah, do you still true. want this person in your life is this person still in your life do they still have questions have they moved on and are they happy and they've forgotten about you and it's just for your own i mean it's fucked up that you have guilt about this anyway because it's a terrible thing that happened to you but yeah i yeah, because it's both. It can be the feeling of being there, like, I don't know why this person dumped me and I feel like shit. Or it can be, I'm happy now, I don't need this baggage back. And yeah, so that's true. you have to always kind of respect, like, the ex's autonomy in whether or not they want to have this discussion with you. That's true, actually. So yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, like, I mean, I guess, yeah, it's a subject that, like, I, I, I probably fall into a position where, like, I'd like to know any ways as such, just because, like, I guilt myself over most things, that sort of thing as such, so we could be like, oh... But then happen. it could also make the ex feel terrible, like, this whole well, thing like, was going on. like, why the fuck didn't you trust me exactly. at the time, right? Like, this whole thing was going on in your life that was super meaningful for you and ended up breaking our relationship, and I could have been there and you didn't let, like... Yeah. Like yeah, like so. What did the time that we have was meaningless? Like yeah. yeah. So you think about it from the ex's position as Not well as from your that own. That's like yeah, it's just like the sort of initial. Yeah. Post but how they might comments. feel receiving this information now, and yeah, whether it is for you or whether it is also for them, I think is a really important approach to that part yes. of the question. Yeah. In terms of present, um, I, I I don't think I think we've only done this once in terms of. Uh, the entirety of our of our show but i think i will use this i don't know whether it's a card but um it seems to be an ongoing issue i i i will say that i i really believe perhaps that there has been um more professional support in these themes you know so you know basically i really worry to go to go like oh just you know you should see a psychologist sort of card you know but um it's such a fundamental part of your life that is seemingly like crippling a lot of your relationships. Yeah, it's still having repercussions eight years on. I mean, I say this, but then like waiting lists are like nine months, you know, especially I, I imagine, you know, in, in, in a rural area, perhaps like that might be like a path to get to and that sort of stuff. So, so um, I really, I, I really hate to, to, to do that sort of, yeah, as I say, use that card of like, oh, you should see, you know, a psychologist. Uh, but again, no fucking harm in that. A lot of this, so, Again, you know, you can't even just say that because sometimes shrinks are terrible, like, as well. Right, but if you've been waiting eight years, another nine months is not... And, like, sometimes people don't realise how strongly trauma affects them until many years later and, and only then go to treat it. Yeah, and especially it's... since they, mentioned, they also mentioned the fact that, like, they can't talk to their friends about it, meaning yeah. that they're probably not talking about it in general. Yeah. So just talking to someone that... Oh my god, I hate to do that thing, but it's like that's someone will be like, it's not your fault, it's not your fault, it's not. But even now, they're feeling even the guilt of like not even talking to their ex and everything. Yeah. Like the guilt is insane. It it just it breaks you. It breaks you. I no, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying like if you can, if it's accessible and affordable to find someone you can talk to that's a professional. If you can't talk to your friends about it, you also um, I don't know. You would be. Maybe pleasantly surprised, you know, there have been instances where I've been, you know, things have been revealed. Basically, someone's like, called, called, called to me and I don't really understand why. And, and I, I, again, I totally internalize it. I think it's a me thing, etc. And then finally, we'll get to the point where they open up about something that, and, and fuck me, that like, that's such a, I know it's basically like, you may think that they may like change your opinion on them, but it, for them, it might also be like, oh fuck, okay, like it's not me then. Okay, let's talk. How are you? What's up? You know. So, so basically, you made 
you might be also like it will be maybe an opportunity to to oh to yeah i guess it depends what your friends like because you mentioned like particularly stigma about men and so like depending on how supportive your friendship group is if, if, if it's all male and not in a particularly uh i don't know empathetic environment or if you have female friends or people who you feel like more or less able to be vulnerable with but i mean they clearly don't so yeah, yeah none sometimes of your Sometimes you opening it up will make other people's lives easier as such if that sounds if that if that makes sense though like because there's this basically they probably in turn like they probably think they it's, can it's on them or something right yeah um, yeah and the, I mean and again and this is the sort of question again like it's kind of similar to the sex work question as in like well I don't know like I mean I don't know for me personally I just I, I'm not necessarily in those shoes and, and, and so, so I feel very awkward about tackling this as such. I was quite close to not doing that. Um, just because like uh, whatever we're saying right now, like I, I imagine that person probably thought of all those things. But I and think if they haven't had anyone to talk to, even hearing what you have in your head back at you is like valuable. Like confirmation is a valuable thing. Like yeah. empathy, love, like mm. we would kill the fucker the fucking does, has done this to you and again we'd like to think that even this project is somehow little by little i don't know is is is, is trying to uh, get rid of the bullshit um violence that is out there the sexual violence that that is that is that is perpetrating a lot of terrible shit but um yeah in regards to like future partners I wouldn't say disclose it straight away, I really wouldn't, unless you feel like you have to, unless you feel like it's the thing that you need, because also, like, I do think you have to trust someone before you open up with this kind of thing, also because, not to say you would do this, but there are occasions where someone will open up about something very personal, and then the other person will feel like an obligation to be with them because right. they've disclosed something personal, the which creates They become a, the saviour, right? Yes. And so, yeah, like, you have to really trust that person. And you can also open up about something like this incrementally. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, the session where you mention everything at once. You can, you can hint at something. You can explain your behaviours or your attitudes towards, I don't know, being, being, like, touched or, like, being... Or whatever it... However it may manifest, you can, you can kind of take it in, yeah, in steps. Yeah. And then have the conversation when you're ready. And, like, if they've responded positively to the prior signs of it being... A potential issue and when we talk when I mention sort of the savior as such it will actually come up in another question is like I don't I don't mean it that you would think they're the savior I think there are certain people um, you feel a responsibility towards someone else's vulnerability well, yeah but not, not I everyone does, but like, like the, I know there, there there are certain types that basically take the take the idea of the savior very seriously mm. so basically it's a them problem rather than it, it's a you problem as such uh, in terms of also like just to touch a little bit I guess on the because they did mention like the intimacy issue a lot mm. in terms of like I can't I want to be intimate I want to have sex and then like it gets to that point I just like fucking can't and um, I, I think we have a very basic understanding of what sex is in general um, I think it really like you know it, it's a huge spectrum of activity um, if there is a tall conversation to be had as to how to get to the point that would be amazing but um yeah or even what the the point is like yeah, the point is yeah like there's yeah like yeah like you say like sex is not just penetration sex is not just orgasm sex is not like sex intimacy is also feeling close that's what intimacy means it's feeling close and there are so many ways of feeling close which and also like i think at the end of the day it is all about love like you kind of you probably don't see yourself in a sexual manner because you 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 have this i guess guilt and and like you don't feel like you and maybe okay, a bad associations say, with sex basically like how can you feel sexy if like if you don't own that you haven't owned being sexy because someone i don't know thought that you you are and took advantage of that as such like i'm basically like it's a it's a it's and or you think oh i was sexy too much or something so basically even the idea of feeling feeling attractive feeling confident or feeling sexy is like that's a whole other conversation even before we get to the this the sex part but that's why i really feel like i mean it's not that helpful but like the if you can find a therapist like answer is pretty much the best one we can get because they can help with that kind of thing like if you get a, some of them can help no if you get person. someone who's specifically trained in like uh yeah like getting people there, there are people who are like who do that kind of thing with people who have like penetration phobia or like intimacy phobias and stuff and there are tools and mechanisms that can help you work through this stuff and if yeah 
but I just don't feel like we're qualified like scientifically to give advice on that specific thing we can talk about the emotional side of it and we have done but the the physical side of it will need you to essentially retrain yourself and, and that needs to start with you yourself, yeah right? yeah which is fucking tough I mean like we struggle with that every day and like I mean I struggle with that every day and and yes like I have a lot of like privileges and all of that but 